Pascal here with Team O'Neill Rally School. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about rally tires. And to start off, I think we're going to look at the construction of uh, a rally tire compared to your typical all-season street tire. Um, so first off, if we're looking at these two cutouts inside of the tire, uh, we're looking at the street tire. We've got this uh, some steel belts up in the tread area to make that, that pretty strong. And then as we move into the sidewall, it gets pretty thin. We've got some, uh, some nylon or some Kevlar belts in there uh, that come down to the bead. And we can look and see that that's just a really thin part of the tire, kind of really weak where the sidewall meets the tread. Uh, this is nice because it's kind of soft and it's going to be comfortable as you drive down the road. There's some give to that tire. Um, and then if we look over at the rally tire, We've got uh, no steel belting up in the tread, but we've got fairly thick construction anyway with some uh, Kevlar um, fabric in there. And then as we move down into the tread area, we have steel belting in the, in, oh, sorry, in the sidewall area, we've got steel belting in the sidewall. So we've got a really stiff sidewall construction. So that as you're driving down a stage and uh, sliding sideways and hitting rocks and everything else, that's gonna hold up a lot better to that abuse. Uh, we've also got a much thicker area around the bead of the tire to help keep from uh, getting flats and de-beading the tire. Uh, I've got a little bit of rubber here to protect the edge of the wheel where it sits on the bead so you don't get rocks pushing in between uh, the tire and the wheel. Uh, and overall just a much, much heavier duty construction than we have in the street tire. Uh, the other thing we're going to find that's quite a bit different with a rally tire compared to the off season is the actual rubber compound that's being used. Uh, so if we look at this, it's, it's you know fairly hard, hard rubber, uh, and the goal is that you want a tire that's going to last a long time, uh, be kind of nice and quiet as you drive down the road, uh, and be fairly cheap to produce. So if we move into some of these. Uh, gravel tires that we've got, we've got different compounds that will be used in different conditions or different temperatures. But the, uh, you look at like this, this is a soft compound Pirelli and it's a really soft rubber compound. Uh, so it's not going to last nearly as long as, a, as an all season tire, but going to give you a lot better grip dr driving down a gravel stage. Um, so that soft rubber compound will help kind of conform. Uh, you'll build a lot of heat in the tire and even on a gravel road, you're gonna, th that soft rubber will really help the tire kind of stick to that road surface. Um, obviously, as you're driving, like I said, that soft rubber's not gonna last as long, so this is a, is a, a DMAC tire that was used in a rally. Um, still actually definitely has some life in it, but you can see those edges are starting to round off. Uh, and this tire maybe has one leg on it or so, so uh, m maybe 40 miles of stage or something. And, and those edges are starting to round off. So with these hard edges, as you're driving down a stage, that nice, you know, brand new tire like that has a really hard edge on all of the uh, tread blocks. That's really gonna help to uh, kind of cut through the loose surface uh, or the loose material on, on top of the road surface and get down to that hard pack. And those, and those hard edges will really bite into the road and give you that uh, grip to accelerate and brake and turn. Um, so as those edges start to wear off, that's when you start to lose a little bit of performance from the tire. Uh, you can kind of see a similar thing happening here on this, this used Maxxis tire where that edge that would be used for accelerating has started to, uh, to round off. So once that starts happening, you lose a little bit of performance from the tire um, and you're not gonna be able to go as fast. Uh, if we look at some of the different tread designs as far as the tread pattern goes, you know, we see we've got, um, five different tire manufacturers here. We see five different unique tread patterns. Uh, they've all got some sil similar qualities. So in all of them, you'll see we've got some area where there's some blocks or some tread faces that are more, um, that would be more perpendicular to the road as you're, as you're driving straight. And those you're gonna use, you know, on the, on the Pirelli here, we've got them down the center um, for your accelerating and your braking. Uh, on the Maxxis over here, we've got a, a bunch of straight tread blocks over on the inside of the tire. Uh, and you see sort of the same thing, you know, this is a, a non-directional Michelin, um, you know, a little bit older design. And that's, again, it's got those, those straight edges that'll help with your accelerating and braking. And you're gonna see something similar with all of these different gravel tires. Uh, this is another, another Michelin that's a, 
a, a directional tread and, and same thing that inner tread block um, used for your accelerating and braking as it's facing straight towards the road. Uh, you've also got various designs of edges where as you're turning and sliding um, you'll start to get other edges that'll again be perpendicular to that road surface um, to help kind of bite in and give you a little more grip. Uh, you'll see sort of a similar thing here where they've got these uh, tread blocks that are um, sort of angled as they go, go through and so as you're turning you get a nice edge that'll bite into the road. Um, something like this is fairly common where you've got your straight tread blocks and then on the other side you've got an angled or a curved tread block again so as you're turning or sliding you get some uh, edges of those tread blocks facing down the road to help with accelerating and braking. Uh, your edge of the tire is going to be quite important on a gravel tire. Uh, so again, kind of a, a common theme with all of these is you've got a kind of a, a really hard 90 degree edge for the edge of that tire. And if you compare that to like a, the all season, that's really rounded. So if you imagine this tire driving down the road and sliding sideways, it's going to want to ride up on that loose gravel that might be on the road surface and you're not going to get down to the harder surface below. So these, these hard edges that we've got on the gravel tires will help kind of push that loose material off and get that tire down onto the hardest part of the road that's going to have the most grip. Um, so that's another thing you'll start to see go off as the tire gets used. You can see this edge on this one, you know, it's not that bad yet, but it's started to wear. Uh, and once that happens, you'll lose some of that, that lateral grip that you want. Yeah, so we've got different compounds for different temperatures. Uh, so this is your K6 Pirelli, so it's a soft compound. And then they would also have uh, a K4, which is a medium, and a K2, which is a hard. And uh, depending on the temperatures that you're running, it is kind of generally how you're going to choose what compound tire you want. So the colder it is, the softer compound you're going to want. As the temp ambient temperature goes up, uh, those softer compounds will start to overheat and wear prematurely. So you'd want to go with a harder compound tire. As far as North America, generally, I think most rallies you'd probably want to go with a soft or a medium compound. There's probably not, mu not much need, unless you're maybe in some of the Californian rallies, uh, places where it's a little bit hotter to go with a hard compound. Obviously, you can think too, if your budget allows a certain amount of tires, you might want to go with a little bit harder tire just to get something that's going to wear a little bit better. Uh, if you want the ultimate in performance, you might want to go with a slightly softer tire for the conditions. Um, but it's not going to last as long, so you can balance that too. Uh, size of tire, also uh, definitely something to consider. Uh, so we've got a couple smaller tires here. Uh, these would be good on a, a lighter, maybe lower horsepower uh, two-wheel drive or maybe open light car. Uh, so we've got a, a narrower tread. Um, so if your car is really light, you don't need a big, wide, heavy tire. Uh, also, very important is how tall the tire is. So, uh, you know, we compare this Michelin, small little Michelin up against a slightly bigger uh, D-Mac. Uh, and this tire on, on a lower horsepower car is gonna be better just because it's gonna give us a little bit better gearing for the car as well. So that's something you can think about. Um, whereas on a you know, higher horsepower, heavier car, you're probably gonna want a little bit wider tire um, and a little bit taller tire as well. So a couple other things to take into consideration is definitely the size of the tire and you want to match that to the car or the vehicle. So one of the other things we've got with the rally tires, obviously we've got kind of a range of manufacturers here. Um, so you're also going to have a, a range uh, of, in terms of pricing. So there's definitely some brands that are going to be more uh, focused on being more of a budget brand and then some of them are going to be a little bit more performance oriented where the prices are a little bit higher. Uh, so like this we've got a, a Pirelli, you know, it's made in uh, Italy or this Michelin that's made in France. Uh, some of these are going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, here's a Yokohama that's, you know, a Japanese tire. Uh, and then you've got other brands. Uh, there's some stuff coming out of China that's pretty good now where they can save a little bit of cost and be a little bit more budget oriented tire. Um, so, you know, this is a, a Chinese manufacturer, Maxis, or this is actually a, you know, D-Max that have been manufactured in China. Um, you're actually seeing there 
production moving to the, the UK. Um, so that, that's a bit of a shift there. Uh, and then there's some other tires too that are uh, generally also of Chinese construction that, that are a little bit cheaper too. There's some other, other brands and I can't think of the names off the top of my head, but you know, this is probably a little bit more expensive than, than the Maxxis. Uh, the big, larger size tires also tend to be a lot more money too. Um, so there's definitely something there, you know, running a bigger, heavy turbo car. As far as running costs go, you're probably going to wear through more tires and also the tires you're buying are more expensive because they're, they're a larger tire. Um, so that's where, again, some of the two-wheel two drive or open light cars, you can buy cheaper tires because they're a little bit smaller and also you're probably going to wear them out less just because the cars are lighter. Um, they're not as hard on the tires. So Pascal here again with Team O'Neill Rally School. Uh, thanks for listening to our little talk on, on rally tires and hope to see you out here soon.